Hytera radios are safe for now, but modular transmitters are in the crosshairs of the FCC. We're following up on the FCC meeting that was held on October 28th regarding banned items on their covered list, and what, if anything, that might mean for ham radio operators. I'll share my opinions. We're about to get super geeky. That's next. <laughs> So this is actually the third video I'll be posting on this topic. If you're not familiar with it, I would encourage you to watch the second video I created on it here. Uh, if you're here just to find out if there was some type of ban passed on high terror radios, I already gave you your answer. Nope, we're good. No ban. Uh, so we've been following the thread of a story that started on Reuters in October saying that retailers were removing millions of listings for items that were banned by the FCC as part of their covered list. None of the retailers were mentioned by name. In hindsight, it begs the question of why there were millions of banned items still here in the first place, but I digress. Most of that list was related to security camera companies like Hikvision or Dawa, but one name showed up in the article that caught my attention, Hytera Communications. Hytera Communications, if you don't know, makes two-way radios, and those radios can be used for DMR and on ham radio frequencies. Now, at first blush, the article gave me the impression that the FCC was gearing up to ban items made by Hytera Communications, who is listed on the FCC's covered list of banned items. With two-way radios seeming to be Hytera's main product, my mind went there. I posted an initial video on that article. It got a lot of views, but I've since removed it because more information came to light that was not included in the original Reuters article, and I wanted to be accurate in talking about the situation as it stands and not cause confusion. After doing more research, I followed up with a second video giving more details about what I found and my opinion on why I believed a ban on Hytera radios by the FCC seemed plausible, maybe likely, and presented my evidence for it. I'm not going to cover all that here. You can go watch that video for that information. I also said I hoped it didn't happen because the effect it could have on other radio brands that have nothing to do with this and the fact that it felt like a little bit like government overreach. I don't like that. We now have new information and clarification that came out of the FCC's meeting in October on the 28th. Like the geek I am, I tuned into the live stream, read the transcripts, and read the agenda that was posted prior to the meeting. In the FCC's press release that followed the meeting, which I'll leave you in a link in the description, the FCC said, quote, while the FCC's covered list rules already prohibit the importation, sale, and marketing of new insecure Huawei, Hikvision, and other covered list devices in the U.S., agency regulations have not applied those prohibitions to previously authorized devices, permitting their continued importation, sale, and marketing. Additionally, those regulations have not applied to component parts that are included within otherwise authorized devices. These new rules will establish a process for the FCC to prohibit the continued importation, marketing, and sale of previously authorized devices that the agency subsequently placed on the covered list based on national security concerns. The FCC could apply this rule in a targeted manner. And to me, that sounds like they can just enforce it when they want. Not really happy about that. Anyway. Additionally, the new rules will close the modular transmitter loophole, meaning that certain insecure Huawei, Hikvision, or other covered list modular transmitters could no longer be included as components within otherwise lawful or authorized devices. And that's interesting. I'll come back to that in a bit. I don't necessarily think it's a threat to two-way radios, but we'll get to that. And in the final paragraph, it says, the commission also adopted a further notice of proposed rulemaking seeking comment on extending our equipment authorization, prohibitions to a larger class of foreign adversary controlled devices and component parts produced by covered list entities, as well as various measures to strengthen enforcement against unlawful marketing of covered equipment. 
So how I'm interpreting that is that the FCC will be able to revoke authorization from items that may have been okayed by them in the past if the device is manufactured by a company on the covered list. Now, maybe in the past, um, you know, this was before the covered list existed or something like that, but for whatever reason it wasn't included, they want to include it now, they want to say it's not authorized, they will have the ability to do so. The last paragraph describes proposed rulemaking, which is a process by which the FCC or other federal um, government agencies can add new rules. Now, the proposed rule is added to the Federal Register, and the public is allowed to view that rule in its entirety and leave comments. And it's not just citizens, it can be special interest groups, it can be um, corporate interest groups, whatever. Everyone can leave a comment. And those comments, maybe they're for the rule or against it, that can sway the decision of the federal agency. Now, there may be some very skeptical people out there that say it doesn't work. You can say, you know, this is no good, everyone can be against it and it'll pass it anyway. I disagree because something happened with the ATF years ago where they wanted to propose a rule and there was a widespread negative reaction to it and they dropped it. So in this case, depending on what this rule say, we can go in and leave our comments and that may sway the FCC to pass it, change it, or just drop it. Now, in this case, it looks as though they are trying to expand the amount and kinds of items that are currently on the covered list. What items? I'm not really sure. When I first read some of the reports about this action, the term component parts was kind of haunting me. What did that mean? But now we know that the FCC is looking at modular transmitters. The good news is no ban was issued on Hytera radios. The bad news, maybe, is that the FCC is targeting modular transmitters as items that can be banned or must meet FCC approval. Now, up to this point, modular transmitters did not need to have FCC approval, but the device that housed the modular transmitter did. So if I made an HT with a modular transmitter, I submitted the HT for approval. Now, the FCC is saying, we don't want the HT, we want the transmitter. That also has to be approved. Maybe both, maybe just one. But in any case, the transmitter, the modular transmitter definitely has to be approved. Um, now, modular transmitters will be held to the same scrutiny as other devices on the covered list. And if you didn't know, a modular transmitter is a device that can be used in many roles of different devices to transmit and receive some kind of RF. So my take on this is that the fight isn't over and we need to keep an eye on this upcoming proposed rule that looks to expand the items that the FCC could add to the covered list. Why? Well, while the modular transmitters found in Chinese-made security cameras aren't, to my knowledge, used for two-way radios, the FCC just used the term modular transmitters and left it at that with no specifics given if these were in two-way radios or security cameras or whatever. Now, modular transmitters can be used in two-way radios. A very popular one used in lots of radios and DIY kits is the SA-818. Now, you might be saying it's not a modular transmitter, but it's literally called a transmitter module. This is the one used in our beloved UV-5Rs. Now, this does not not appear on the covered list. And I don't know that this is the kind of thing that the FCC is looking for. So don't freak out. It's, it's not on the list. We're not talking about that. I'm just using it as an example of a modular transmitter that's used in ham radios. The problem as I see it would be if there's a modular transmitter made by one of these companies on a covered list used in more than one of these items, which could include a two-way radio, if the modular transmitter is rejected by the FCC, from what I understand, it means every product that uses that module will also be banned by proxy because the module itself is banned. Again, the FCC did not specify which or what kind of modular transmitters they're looking for, and their general term of telecommunications may refer to two-way radios, but I can't be certain of that. I have heard opinions on both sides of that term. So we learned some things, we have a lot more questions, and we wait to see what this proposed rule could say when it gets posted to the Federal Register for comment. And I do believe that since they voted in the affirmative on the 28th, 
it must be posted to the Federal Register. It's not just going to go away. I know this was a longer one, so I really appreciate you hanging out with me till the end. As always, respectful comments and discussion are welcomed, even if you disagree. I'm Matt, and remember, when it comes to tech, I've got you covered.